Hello and welcome to Lecture 8. In this lecture, we are going to talk about another approach to solve parabolic PDs. But this approach is not just only valid for parabolic PDs, but it is valid for all the PDs in which we have first order derivative in time and we can have any other orders of spatial derivatives. Let's start this. So we are going to learn about method of lines on the parabolic PDs, the PD that we are solving already in previous lectures with some other approaches. Okay, so my equation one is you are already familiar with this equation, like this is the standard heat or diffusion equation in one dimension. So in case of method of lines, we actually convert given PDE into system of ODEs. To do that, what we do is we write the left hand side derivative in time as ordinary derivative instead of partial derivative. So you see I converted this partial into ordinary, but I said that this ordinary derivative is for specific value of u. So this is ui. So the ui ODE will be equal to, I have to discretize right hand side in terms of i's. The right hand side is the second derivative here. So I can use any numerical approximation for second derivative. Here I use second order discretization for this second derivative. This is the discretization we have we are doing already in our previous lectures. But you are not restricted to use only second order discretization. You can use any discretization, even you can use first order discretization. But this approximation is of course going to contribute towards the error in your solution. So OD for ith value of u is going to be something like this, and there are going to be m ODs. So m here represents your spatial mesh. The bigger your spatial mesh is going to be, the bigger you have the number of ODs that you need to solve to approximate equation. N1. So you see the right hand side is just the algebraic expression, but the left hand side is depending on time. So instead of using numerical solver of PDs, we need to use numerical solver for ODs in order to approximate 2, which is the approximation of equation 1. To complete this problem, of course, we are going to need initial condition for time derivative and two boundary conditions since we are approximating a PDE which has second order derivative in space. Now the one big question here is how we are going to numerically approximate these ODs. Since we are going to use MATLAB, so we are going to use MATLAB built-in OD solver to approximate these ODs. So we don't have to write any extra code for the OD solvers here. Before going further, I'm going to introduce you with this very nice book on method of lines. I'm going to attach the link of this book uh, in the description. So what I was saying is you can actually solve any PDE which has first order derivative in time and on the right hand side you can have combination of spatial derivatives. You can have first derivative, second derivative or any higher order derivative on the right hand side. Also you can solve system of PDEs. So here you see the bar on the u represent that your u is a vector. So u can be more than one dependent variable. You can find interesting example of PDEs in this book along with their MATLAB codes. Okay, let's go into solving this heat equation. Okay, I'm going to use the same example that we were using in the development of our previous codes to compare results. So I have this PDE here, which is valued on the domain x0 to 1. And these are the boundary condition along with the initial condition. This PDE says that take the spatial step this and time step this and find all the values of. So once again, using this spatial step, the spatial nodes of our x variable are going to be 11, while the spatial node of our time derivative are going to be two. So this is a picture of 2D mesh that we are going to solve. So here I've represented the spatial values on in the horizontal direction while the time movement in the vertical direction. So each row here corresponds to spatial values at every time step. While the first green ones on the bottom are your initial condition, the left vertical line is your left boundary condition and the right vertical line is your right boundary condition. And the black ones are the ones that we have to find using method of lines. So from the boundary condition, you will observe that all the vertical green dots are going to be zero for the left boundary and the right boundary condition is also zero. So you will have the right vertical dots, green dots also zero. And for the initial condition, since the initial condition depends on space, so for ith, you need to use ith value of x that you can find from here. So let's go ahead and start solving this equation using method of lines in MATLAB. So I'm here in MATLAB and I'm creating a new script file and I'm going to name it as MOL. And I will zoom it and then I'm going to start writing my code. So first of all, I'm going to use clear all to clear the workspace and CLC to clean the command window. And then the first thing I'm going to do is introduce if there are any parameter in my PDE. If you observe from the notes, my PDE has this parameter alpha. 
So I am going to introduce alpha is equal to one, and then I have to think about my time domain and my spatial domain. For time domain, I am introducing initial time and then the ending time. And then I'm going to introduce a variable T out where I will create my time mesh starting with T naught ending at TF with a step size of 0 0.01. Then for my spatial domain, I'm going to introduce my starting X, my ending value of X, and then I'm creating my X mesh starting with X naught ending at a step size of 0 0.1. This step size is useful and I need it when I'm going to discretize my spatial derivative like here in the bottom I need the step size. So I will introduce dx variable to uh, calculate this step size since the step size is constant. So I am going to subtract the consecutive values of x to get this dx. For initial condition, since my initial condition is sine pi x, so instead of doing sine on pi steric x, I, uh, I was using MATLAB built-in function sine pi. The reason behind that is if I use sine function and pi static x inside and I run this code, you're going to see my u naught. The last value is close to zero, but not exactly zero. But this is exactly zero when you use sine pi. This might happen because of the approximation that MATLAB used for the sine function. So instead in MATLAB, you can use sine pi function, which exactly multiply pi with the x and then take the sine. So if I run this now, you will see that in my u naught, the last value is zero. So these are the initial condition values. Um, you can also observe this from the notes. These are kind of the initial ingredients that we need. Next thing is doing the OD integration. So we will learn how to use OD solver in MATLAB. So there are two things. The first command is OD set in which you set some built-in options from MATLAB. And the other is which OD solver you are going to use. If you type OD set in command window, you will see the options that you can set, like the maximum step size your solver going to take or the maximum order. And there are many options. The most common option that we use is setting the relative and absolute tolerance. Like I set the relative tolerance equal to 10 to the power minus 4 and absolute tolerance 10 to the power minus 2. So these tolerance determine the amount of error between two consecutive iterations of OD solver. Okay, next we use the MATLAB built-in OD solver. There are many built-in solvers. If you type ODE here, so you will see many options here. OD45 is fourth order Runge-Kutta method. And then there is OD15S. I usually use OD15S because it is also applicable for stiffed ODs. Stiffed ODs are those in which the solution can have sharp changes. So to be on safe side, I always try to use OD15S. If you type OD15S in the MATLAB help, you will learn its syntax. Okay, so I'm going to teach you here. So the syntax of OD15S, you first set two output variables, one for time and one for your dependent variable. And inside the brackets, first you set your function. This function is going to be the function in which you are going to write your discretized PDEs. After that, you will give it the time domain on which you want the computed solution. And then you give it the initial condition for your dependent variable, which was u here and the initial condition was u naught. And then you give it the options. In case you are not giving the options, you have to set it something like this in case you are not giving option because MATLAB by default, MATLAB know that after the initial condition, there should be options. Okay. And after that, you're going to give any inputs that you want to give to that function. So only thing that is left here is writing this my PDE function. So you will first write a function with output variable ut and then the name should be the same that you are calling in your OD solver and the inputs are going to be time, then u variable and then alpha uh, and any input variable that you give that in case we have alpha and dx. Inside the function you are first going to define the number of nodes in your spatial domain. You can have that from the length of u that has the values for all the spatial nodes. And then we are going to run loop for all spatial variable that means solving the ODs for all spatial nodes. And inside the for loop, I will split the first and the last node using if else condition. So because the first and the last node, we will have the boundary condition. And in the else node, I am going to have discretized PDE. Okay, on the left boundary, I have boundary condition equal to zero. That means u ith value is zero. On the right boundary, I have boundary condition equal to zero. That means u ith value equal to zero. And inside, at the inner nodes, I have ut, which is my output variable. That means uh, du by dt ith value at the inner node is going to be determined using the discretization. And this is the spatial discretization of second order that were in the nodes in equation number two. It is better to introduce ut ith value at the boundaries also. Since the boundary conditions are zero, that means ut ith value there will be zero. 
even if the boundary condition will be constant that means utith value will be zero there so for constant boundary condition always use utith value equal to zero so keep in mind this ut variable actually contains du by dt while the u variable contains the results of your current u that's it this is the algorithm of method of line if we are going to run this it might throw this error and that's because of my pd must return a column vector and if this happens uh, you just store ut transpose into ut okay let's run this once again okay it ran successfully and now let's see the results if i click on my u variable these are the results and if i open the notes from my crank nicholson code these were the results using crank nicholson code that was built earlier in this lecture series and if you compare this the results are quite matching and maybe the method of lines is giving better results and that's why you see a little bit difference there is one important thing to note it does not matter whatever the time domain you are going to give to OD solver OD solver is going to use its own time mesh in order to meet the tolerance and at the end it will return the values to you whatever you gave it if you don't give this step size while giving the time domain to the OD solver in that case OD solver will return the time mesh that it used to solve that ODE okay let's let's do a test run Okay, for example, if you want to see which time steps OD solver used, you go into the function and you check the T values that OD solver going to use at every iteration. So you see the time values that OD solver used in order to meet the relative tolerance and give you the results. But at the end, if you see your T variable that was given as an output to the OD solver, that only has two time values. If you want the values that OD solver used, just avoid this time step here and instead use okay if we run it now you will see these are the time values that od solver used in order to compute the solution and meet the relative tolerance okay that's it about this example and we are going to test run this code on the example from the hoffman's book that we did earlier in the previous course that we developed in this lecture series okay this is the example that we are doing already in this lecture series and i am going to set the parameters according to this problem now so i have set the parameters according to that example in that example alpha is this your ending time is 1.08 uh, your time step is 0 0.01 your ending spatial domain is 0 0.04 your steps spatial step size is 0 0.001 your initial condition is zero everywhere so i have to do zero static x to make a vector of initial condition and then the left boundary condition is 40 in that case so i have used for i equal equal to one ui value equal to 40. now if i run this code and i show you the results you will see that the results are going to be consistent with the ones that we have here in this example but the problem that you see here is your left boundary condition is not 40 it's showing it as zero and that's because your initial condition was saying that the value at the left boundary is zero to fix this bug you always try to have the same values at the boundary of the initial condition as the boundary condition so because u not first value is 40 because of boundary condition so i set it equal to 40 and in this case it will fix that bug and if you observe that these results are consistent with the result of off mem that use the crank nicholson code okay if you want to check the plots you can use the same plotting commands that we used in previous course that we developed in this lecture series okay that's pretty much it about the method of lines it's very strong method and it's very useful um, not only for parabolic pds but the pds which have first order time derivative and then any mixed derivative in space like the convection diffusion equation navier stokes equation so you can solve them using method of lines uh, you might be worried about using the different boundary condition other than Dirichlet condition because in all of the lecture series i have used the Dirichlet boundary condition i'm going to make a next video on using different types of boundary condition like newman condition or robin type condition you can also use method of lines for coupled partial differential equation and that book that I'm going to put in the description is going to help you a lot to implement the method of lines for different type of partial differential equations including the coupled partial differential equations. That's it for this video. If you are new on this channel and you like this video, don't forget to subscribe this channel and share with your colleagues.